Okay, I think we're here. Sorry if that was a little awkward. But anyway, I'm happy to be here. We're talking about our healthy, healthy thin mentalities. And you guys who are new, um, real quick, a uh, quick synopsis of what our message is here is that dieting makes you a dieter. It doesn't make you thin. And when you look around the world and in your own life, people you know, how many dieters do you know who are even obese? You know, dieting does not make you thin. It makes you a dieter. And that is not what you uh, want to be for the rest of your life. So if you, um, if that message resonates with you, just stick around and, and listen to this because we've got a way out of living that way. I know I was a dieter for 25 years, healthy thin mentality person now for 19, and there's no comparison. And guess what? Being a healthy thin mentality person keeps you thin and in your happy, healthy weight range easily and for the rest of your life. Um, there's no way I'd ever go back to having a diet mentality. It's, it's, it's about rigidity. It's about denial. It's about um, a lack of respect for your body, your voice. And that is what we're here doing. We're getting rid of that diet mentality and we're embracing a healthy thin mentality to replace that. Because yes, you can say, okay, so I'm not going to diet anymore. But you need a plan. Because if you've been a dieter for a long time, as I was, you have forgotten how to eat. Yes, literally forgotten how to eat. Forgotten that Mother Nature gave us incredibly um, powerful signals and biology designed to keep us alive, keep us eating, and keep us not eating when we're not hungry anymore. Um, so our perspective here is that hunger is a gift. It is not something to be feared as long as you have the financial means, of course, to satisfy hunger, which again, we're very lucky if, if that's the case for you, remember that. And um, instead of fearing hunger, which you do as a dieter because it's four o'clock, you can't eat till seven and you're starving and it makes you fear hunger. As a healthy thin mentality person, you love hunger. You know why? Because then when you eat, food is so amazing and hunger is your tool. Last week I said something that um, I got a comment, so I'm going to say it again because I'd like to know what resonates with you guys. So any comments you make, I really appreciate because again, it helps me guide me in knowing what's most helpful to you. So I said last week that instead of um, a scale, use hunger as your scale. And that's a much better way to measure progress. So um, I really appreciate that comment. And you know, when I think about it, that is a really good way to think about it. When I reflect on that, it's a good way to think about it because you know, your scale is, oh, how am I doing? Keeps me honest, blah, blah, blah. That's not what it does at all. It actually makes you disconnect from your body. So instead, when you're thinking, what do I replace my scale with? You replace it with your hunger, with paying attention. Are you matching eating with hunger? Because that's where your healthy thin mentality lies. So I have, I think, like all these questions I want to go over today, which again, I love your questions and it helps me know what to talk about. So I'm just going to go through them. Okay. One of the questions was, how can I trust my cravings? And this person was very good. This is in our private Facebook group. Hey, please join us. Um, it's just saying that she was having a really hard time doing that. That inability to trust your cravings comes from you judging your cravings, right? Like if you were a dieter for many years or decades or however long, you know the you know the um, gig, right? You're not supposed to eat um, uh, sugar. You're not supposed to eat you know things with a lot of calories, with not you know not much chewing. In other words, you know, oh, eat a salad because you get to chew a lot, and there's not that many calories in it. So like eating a cupcake would be terrible, or um, you know eating after seven, or um, not eating breakfast. All these rules that are in your head that um, I was told they were totally in my head as well. All these questions. Instead, you you instead of thinking it as uh, you judging your cravings, just go, hey, don't worry about it. If I'm craving something and I'm hungry, guys, that's always a caveat. You you can, you do not want to eat without hunger, but let your cravings go in the beginning. They're going to be different. They're going to evolve over time, but as long as you're eating when you're hungry, nothing is fattening. It may not be the most amazing nutrition. But look around. Nutrition, you know, is is, is something you want to think about eventually. But right now, we're worried about quantity. We're, we're concerned with how do we match up eating with hunger? And I can hear people saying, oh, well, yeah, but if you eat more nutritious food, it holds you longer. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Let's get basic here first. Let's eat when we're hungry. And it, over time, the choices change. Um, and you, you will find, believe me, this happened to me early in because your body wants nutrition. But you got to give yourself a chance to go through all the crap food because you have to, you have to 
take the power away from that. So when you go through a period of time where you're like, well, if I'm craving um, cookies for dinner, that's what I'm eating. Go ahead. As long as you're hungry, you're not going to gain weight from that. And that is, that is um, it's like human nature to crave what we can't have, right? So, so get that out of your system. Again, you guys, I'm going to say that like for a fourth time already, when you're hungry. Because yes, if you eat cookies when you're not hungry, you will gain weight. If you eat lean chicken breast and carrots when you're not hungry, you will gain weight. It's the matching of the quantity that we go after first, okay? It's really important. So don't worry, don't judge your cravings. Just let it go. Just go, okay, I'm hungry. This is my eyeballs see this. My nose is smelling that it looks really good. My, my mouth is watering. Eat it, get over it. It's not gonna hurt you. Um, again, you know, our world, we're, we, we so focus on nutrition. And again, I'm not saying nutrition isn't important, but what's way more important is getting your weight in a, in a happy, healthy weight range. And also it's not yo-yoing because yo-yoing is very stressful for the body. And that's what dieting does to us. It makes us yo-yo weight loss, weight gain, weight loss, stress for the body, stress for the emotions. You know how crappy that feels when you've lost weight and then you gain it back and you're like, oh God, it's, we, we don't want to perpetuate that. We want to say enough. We want to say stop. We want to say, I'm not doing that anymore. So again, how you do that in the beginning, when you're having a craving and your diet brain kicks in and goes, well, that's not very nutritious. Well, it's okay. It, your nutrition doesn't happen at every meal. It happens over time. So relax a little bit. Eat it. Get over it. Don't judge it. Don't judge it if you're wanting to eat 1130 um, at night. Like, oh, wow, that's too close to bedtime. Don't worry about it. Again, keep focused on matching eating with hunger. That is your goal. That is your goal. That is your goal. There's no scale to follow. There's no nothing. It's am I in this moment reacting to hunger with food? Or am I reacting to boredom with food? Or am I reacting to um, being stressed with food? See, and, I, and I've got lots of videos on stress eating and boredom eating, and it's not as complicated as you think to get rid of that as well. Okay, since I brought it up, I'm gonna say it real quick because I know it's a big, a big thing for people. If you are stressed and you feel like eating, just say to yourself, hey, I'm stressed, I feel like eating. When hunger kicks in, I will. So it's not that it's so demonic to, to be stressed and eat. It's when you're stressed and you're eating without hunger, that's the problem. So instead of saying, I can never eat when I'm stressed, say, when I'm stressed and I feel like eating, I'm just going to make sure I'm hungry and then I'm going to eat. And you know what? Uh, yeah, I think that's when I'm stressed and feel that way and eat with hunger, it, it feels good. That's okay. Human nature has a lot of different ways to feel good and that's one of them and there's nothing wrong with that. Boredom eating, that's the other big one I get. Okay, real quick. When you think about your boredom eating, think how little amount of time it actually takes you to chew and eat. Right? Just, just be logical about this. So you say, okay, well, I got to chew for like three minutes and now I'm not bored anymore, right? Or what, you know, the actual chew time. Instead think, okay, well, that's not very smart because if I eat for boredom, then I will, that is going to be so much food. So, so, so much food. Back out of that and think this. Think, okay, I'm bored. I don't really have anything fun to do. I love food. Okay, go make yourself food. Make the best recipes you can organize your refrigerator, do all things associated with food that are really nice. And when you're hungry, eat it, but just, just delay, delay that actual eating, you know, when you're bored or have nothing fun to do with when hunger kicks in and it will, it'll kick in soon. We get to eat many, many times a day, right? You know, I probably eat five times a day, different things, right? doesn't matter. Don't follow that. I'm just saying, that's me. You're going to be different. That's, that's where you, um, that's why, that's why I'm saying don't judge your hunger. Don't judge your food choices. Just eat it. And again, the diet industry has made us think, oh, but you need to eat this and this and this. Oh, relax. Eat when you're hungry. Delay eating when you're not hungry. And those food choices, again, will evolve over time. And you're going to be fine eating wonderfully healthy foods. Okay, if you eat when you want, when you're hungry, but the calories will be over 2,000 calories per day, you don't believe you'll gain weight, question mark. Okay, let me see. How long does it take to be hungry the first time? Okay. Um, okay, so you're obviously counting calories, right? So you want to not do that. And the reason you don't, you want to not do that is because when you count calories, it informs your food making decisions. So just like getting on the scale, like think, think of this, when you were a dieter, did you ever, um, eat something and look at the calorie package to see if you could eat more? Of course you have. That's a typical diet behavior. What if you didn't do that? 
What if instead of looking at that calorie count, you said, have I had enough? Am I still hungry? That's what we want to get back to, that association with eating and hunger. And so if you're going, okay, I think I'm eating over 2,000 calories today, you're judging, judging, judging all over the place, and you're not connecting with your hunger and satiety. So to your question, it depends on you know, your size, your age, your activity level, if 2,000 calories a day would make you gain weight. I don't know, but that question, so I can't answer that part of the question for you or for anybody. It depends upon your size. Some people can eat well over that and not gain weight. But I know what we're here doing is we're trying to lose weight, right, and then stay there. That's what most of you guys are trying to do. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to lose those pounds that I kept gaining back, and I wanted to stay there. So, um, again, just like the scale, when you, when you keep looking at calorie counts, you change your decisions based on how much you've had in that day. And I'm telling you, oh, there was a great post, which is one of the questions in here. Um, a lady in our private Facebook group was concerned because she was eating a lot for a couple of days. Then she goes to the doctor and finds out her white blood, count, white blood cell count is high. And she's going, you know, and she made the connection, which I'm, I think she's right, is that her body was fighting something and burning a lot of calories and she was hungrier. See, we don't even know what's going on in our bodies. We really don't. And I don't care what, you know, major new scientific breakthrough has come up. They all change over time. So I don't trust those anymore. What I do trust is my body. And I'm not, I love science and I love doctors and all that. I'm not, I'm not dissing that completely. I'm just saying in this year, 2019, we don't have enough information to know uh, more than our instincts will inform us anyway. So why don't you listen to your instinct? Because that is evolved over, depending upon your belief system, you know, a long, long time, right? So here you are with all this wisdom. You guys, there is nothing man-made that even comes close to what we've got going on in here. Nothing, not even close. Any scientist will tell you that. Any neurologist, anybody who's in that field will say, yeah, that's, that's really true. So all the trillions of synapses that are going on in your brain, giving you information about what you need to eat, and we just go, oh no, I'm just gonna follow Weight Watchers. Think, think how your body, you know, is disrespected that way. You go, no, my body, like the lady who had the high white blood cell count, if she was on Weight Watchers, it would go, no, don't eat more than that. You've got your points for the day or whatever program you're on, intermittent fasting, don't eat yet, or the Bright Line diet, which I'll talk about. No, instead of following that, she, she followed her body and she was eating more and she was concerned. But again, she was, um, it was confirmed by the, her blood work that, yeah, she was, she was having some kind of an illness. And that's really, really important. So, okay, yeah, I'm not counting calories, but eating high calorie food all day, healthy food each day versus healthy food each time you're hungry. Eating unhealthy will be more calories, thus gaining weight. Well, okay, that last sentence is, I don't believe, correct. If you, you're equating unhealthy food with high calorie food, right? So that's sometimes true, but sometimes healthy food is very high in calories, right? I mean, you know, think about an, um, an avocado, which is full of this fabulous fat that I remember a long time ago. Now they're kind of in vogue, but it was like, oh, don't eat those, they're really high in fat. So it's not that unhealthy and healthy foods are necessarily, you know, the unhealthy ones higher in calories because some really healthy food, like a big um, amount of like, I don't know, if, if you consider red meat healthy, some people do, some people don't, but that can be more calories. In any case, that's not even really the point. The point is when you eat those calories and it's unhealthy food, let's just let you call or let us call it unhealthy for the moment. Guess what happens in your body? Your body with all these synapses, all this in incredible power, knows what you ate, knows how many calories you ingested, and knows what energy deficiency or, or, or too much energy you've consumed, right? Even if it's not great food, it's still calories. And you know what? That unhealthy food would save your life if you were starving. So it's not perfect, but it's life-giving, even unhealthy food, even unhealthy food. So back out of that and go, okay, so um, I'm sitting and I'm eating unhealthy food all day and it's gonna be more calories. Well, if the, the unhealthy food you're eating is denser in calories, your body isn't fooled. Your body knows that, and your hunger will adjust. And if, if eating something makes you feel bad, that's different. If eating something sweet at a certain time of the day, like for me, if I eat some big sweet thing at four in the afternoon, and I say this all the time, I don't feel good, so I don't do it, because I'm listening to my smart body. But in general, let's say in the morning, and I hate to bore you guys with this because I feel like I say this all the time. Something sweet, I feel great. So, so you know, listen to your body. It's like, remember the old biofeedback that used to be a thing a long time ago? 
Listen to the feedback your body's giving you. And you're saying, no, you won't gain weight if you only eat when you're hungry. And another thing is, you know, for the very few, very few naturally thin people out there that still even exist, but there were more when I was younger and I, and I knew a couple, I knew my grandmother who I modeled all this after because she was a naturally thin person. She was uh, five feet tall. I, I, she didn't weigh 100 pounds. She, she ate whatever she wanted. So she, if I can channel her, if she heard you say that, well, you know, if you're going to, if you're eating like some delicious thing you like, you're going to be satisfied and you're going to move on with your day. And if you, but if you sit there and hyperventilate that, oh God, I ate something unhealthy, then that's going to get you stressed and change your food choices. You want to calm down. And dieting has made us nervous wrecks because we're like, oh God, when am I going to go to another diet? Oh, what can I eat? What, what can I eat? Oh, what food combination? Oh God, it's, it's seven. I can't eat after seven or I'm not supposed to eat again for four hours or 14 or 16 hours or or the bright line, which we'll talk about, you know, okay, I, I can't have sugar, I can't have um, flour, now I forget what they are, but there's rules which are not new, it's just another diet. Um, it's stress, it's stress. You no, know, dieting is like, hmm, I mean, I'm sorry, huh. healthy thin mentality is like, hmm, wow, that looks really good. And you eat it and you enjoy it, there's no guilt. So it's a free experience. It's the joy of eating something, let's say unhealthy, I'll just say a dessert, okay, which it, you know, when you're a dieter, you eat that and you're like, while you're eating it, you feel bad. <laughs> so how fun is that? You, oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? When you have a healthy mentality, you go, oh, wow, that is so divine. Like, you know, you're sitting at dinner and like, I, I did this this past weekend. I just wanted dessert. I don't know. I don't always. Sometimes I do. And so, so I saved my hunger. I saved some of it because it's my precious gift. My hunger is, is a gift to me, right? I saved it. And I, and I didn't eat so much at dinner because I'm like, I knew where I was, I knew this dessert I really love, and, and I ate it. And it's like, when you're a dieter, that's never good, because you're always filled with remorse. When a healthy, thin mentality, you know, I ate it, I didn't even eat all of it. It's it, this pecan chocolate bar, so good. And, but then you, you eat it, and you enjoy it, and you're done. And, and my body, like, knows what I ate, and hunger will adjust. So I hope that answers that question. Um, yeah. And again, okay, now back to me pointing out the very few naturally thin people I've seen, not even that I've known that well, but I've noticed how they eat or whatever. People, this is a long time ago, because again, I don't run into them much anymore because everyone's dieted their natural thinness away. Anyway, they're picky, right? And they eat what they like. And if, if there's a donut and they only like the top part, then that's the part they eat. They don't eat the whole thing because why would they eat the stuff they don't like just because they were eating the top part they do like? It's stuff like that. So, and bottom line is, with your healthy food mentality, you eat less because once you get out of that, I'm on a diet, I'm not on a diet. So when you're on a diet, you eat less than with a healthy food mentality. But then when you're off the diet, you eat way more. So over time, you know, you've got the diet behavior and the non-diet behavior. The, the mix of those two is higher than if you're in a healthy food mentality. Healthy food mentality is higher than eating as a diet, but it's stable. And then another thing that happens is when you have your healthy mentality, your metabolism calms down, and it's um, it's it's not hoarding calories anymore. So that you can handle, you know, a, like after a diet, don't you ever notice that you eat anything and you start gaining weight because your metabolism is shrunk up and hoarding food. That's no good. That is not what you want, and that's not what you want when you went on your first diet. I'm sure. Um, Michelle, how long does it take to be hungry the first time you try? I never feel hungry. Okay, well, it depends. It depends on, on um, kind of where you are right now. If you have been a dieter and you have not listened to hunger for years, you don't even know if you're hungry. I say this all the time too, so hang in there for you guys who've heard this a lot. If you want to know whether or not you're hungry and you can't decide, you simply eat a little something. And what happens in your mouth? What happens to your body? Do you like feel like a flower when it's all shriveled in the sun and you put water on it and you go, ah. Is that how you feel? Or do you just feel nothing? Well, if you feel nothing, then your body isn't hungry. Because when you're hungry and you provide food, your body thanks you with great you know, taste bud sensations and you feel better. Um, if you've never dieted, it depends. You know, my message here is for people who are dieters, who have, have experienced dieting over and over again and are left heavier because of it. So it, I, I don't know you. I don't know what your situation is. If you've been a dieter, my guess which I think I'm probably really right, is you just don't know what hunger feels like anymore. But you can back into it the way I just said, 
and and you'll you'll wake it up and while you wake up your voice really listen it'll be quiet at first and in our workbook you know um, guys I made this workbook to help you it's it's exactly how I went through my healthy mentality and luckily I'm a note taker because this was in the year 2000 and I journal and all that stuff so I built it based on that it's there to help you through this and it goes through all this kind of thing so you know I, I, I just recommend you get it if, if these are your questions I promise it will help you um, and there's the little, those little tips and ways that you can um, the ways you can discover what your hunger is and you know I recommend you know, treating yourself as a little science experiment and saying, okay, what, what is helping me here? What feels good? What, when I eat this, how do I feel? And when I eat this, when I feel like this, was that hunger? Get to know yourself again. Um, okay, second question. I'm going to go through these a little quicker because that was long. Um, can eating this way lower heart disease and blood pressure and all that? Yeah, I'm not a doctor, right? But all I do know, and I think any doctor would agree, that getting your weight in the, um, your healthy, happy, weight range determined by you is good for you, right? So, um, and weight loss in general lowers blood pressure in general. And, and I also want to refer you to that post. It was really great in our Facebook page about a guy who ate all junk food for a month or something, but I think he, I think he watched calories. I think he did, but it was all junk food, which I don't recommend. You know, you want to eat what your body craves. Your body's not going to always crave junk food. But in any case, all his numbers got improved. He lost weight, all that, meaning that food quantity is really important. Quality is important. Quantity is, is if not at least as important, it's more important, right? Because if you're overeating really nutritious food, you will gain weight. You can become hugely obese eating really nutritious food and think, oh, but I, my body needs this. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Your body needs a break from all this food. You need to just, just keep your hunger alive and use that as your guide, I'm telling you. Um, I just want to congratulate our um, person on Facebook who put her scale in the Goodwill pile for sure this time, great. And what that does, you guys were going, what, no scale? If you don't have your scale, guess what you have to listen to? You have to listen to your body because you're not going to have that morning reckoning, right? Or that three times a day reckoning, okay? Or you're not going to adjust your eating like, well, I'm not going to eat right before I go to bed because in the morning I'll weigh less. Oh yeah, I did that. And I know you do too. So all those things are ridiculous and detach you from your hunger. So getting rid of your scale is not an excuse to just gain weight because you're not going to know it. It's, it's going to make you think, okay, what am I doing here? I'm listening to my body. My body says, I don't need more food right now. And I don't care what the scale says now or tomorrow. I'm listening to my body. That is the way to thinness. Having a scale is the way to be a dieter. And dieters and thin people are completely different. And dieting is terrible. It's, it, it's, it's joyless and it's rigid and it backfires. Um, okay, this is a great question from um, a person in our private group who was, is a runner and she's concerned that after she runs, she's not hungry, and, but she's reading these things saying, you know, you want to replace your glycogen right after you run. Okay, this is my response to that. Are you training to be an Olympic athlete? Because if you are, there's some regimented food things you're going to do because of your trainer, your coach. That's different. What we're trying to do here is be healthy and happy. Don't worry about replacing your glycogen levels. Your body, your incredibly smart body that just carried you on a long run, will let you know when you need food. And I'm not trying to sound sarcastic there, but I mean, I was, I, you know, I did things like that too. Well, I should eat now because I just worked out. Well, no, you shouldn't. Your body will let you know. And <coughs> just like I had no idea I needed to sneeze. I had no idea. My body knew. I had no idea, and it sneezed. I'm just saying, normal, normal biology like that. We respect when it's a sneeze. Oh, I, I shouldn't sneeze now. I should wait till noon because that's sneeze time. No, right? That's silly. That's the same thing with eating. That's the same thing. You want to respect what your body's asking for and when. Who think? Eating this way lowered my A1C. My blood pressure is due to letting stress, not owning um, my own power in my shell. Yeah, exactly. Right. It, it does. I mean, I, I had to, again, not doctor, and I don't want to, like, put out, um, you know, guidance that a doc, I don't want to usurp a, your doctor's power, but think logically about this. If you get your weight lower, yeah, your body, a lot of good things happen, right? Glycogen levels will replenish. And who knows, when they study people who are runners or athletes, everyone's kind of different. Like we all have different blood types. We all have different energy levels, everything. So the advice for one person may not be right for you from your coach anyway, if you were training as an Olympic athlete or something. 
Um, not hungry when you're starting. Oh yeah, this was a great um, phrase that someone else thought of, which I think is great. If you're not hungry when you start eating, how will you know when to stop? Yeah. So eating without hunger, if you're just like a ship without an oar, uh, without a rudder. You know, what am I going to do here? You don't know. You need hunger. You need hunger as your guide. So um, eating without it, you it's just like oh, I don't know. How much more should I eat? No. Am I hungry? Yes. Oh, this is so good. This is so good. I love this. Hunger's gone. Okay. That was wonderful. I don't feel guilty. I nourished myself with food that I love, whether it was the most healthful meal or something really incredibly healthful that I just happened to crave. It's all good. You're responding to your body. And again, this, this whole message here is leading you to you, not me. Okay, bright line. Um, I posted in our group that really sad video of this woman who did bright line and then she, she lost, finally got to a certain weight she wanted to be. Okay, not classified as obese. And, um, and then she, she snapped and she was so sad. And I, it's, it's the same, that happened to me. I'm sure that happened to you where you get there and then you just like crack. And then you're like, what loser am I that I lost this weight and now I can't keep it off. You're not a loser at all. It's because you're working in a paradigm that doesn't work, right? It doesn't work guys. When you restrict, 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 there's payback, there's backfiring. And again, the very few people who are rigid. I mean, I know this woman who, um, well, she's like 85 now, but she was a weight, weight watcher for life every week, every week, you know, 50 years after she joined the program or we had a long time after she would go in for these weekly weighings and she was so rigid and it's like, God, is that the way you want to live your life? I mean, some people do, but most of us humans aren't going to be able to do that anyway. By most, I mean, 99.58%, right? So, but, but still, even if you could, is that what you want? It's not what I want. It's not what I ever wanted. I didn't think when I went on my first diet that that was going to make me a dieter for the rest of my life. And luckily it didn't. I was 40 when I wised up. Not, not too late for anyone. If you're 60, you're not too late. 70, it's never too late. It's never too late. Um, okay, does, can you reverse heart disease um, as much as a plant-based diet? I don't know. I mean, if you want to eat a plant-based diet, I think plant-based diets are probably fantastic in many, many ways. But let's not put the cart before the horse. You want to get your weight under control. And if you eat um, less because you have a healthy thin mentality, which is what happens, you eat less, no miracle here, no secret here, to lose weight, you have to eat less, right? If you do that with a healthy thin mentality and over time start eating a lot of more plant-based foods, that's, the, that's where my head goes with that. Don't restrict yourself and try to lose weight. Lose weight by king into hunger and satiety and then as you feel comfortable and calm, you may say, you know, I really like plant-based foods. I'm going to encourage my hunger to go there, meaning like I'm going to um, always have delicious plant-based stuff that I love in my refrigerator, easy to get to. Um, but I'm also, if I crave something not, I'm going to have that too. But just make it, take care of yourself. Like if you were your own kid, take care of yourself. Um, okay, I did that one. Okay. Okay. Um, Eating, okay, eating too much at night. In my experience, eating too much at night is mostly based on not eating enough in the day, right? So if, you, if you're judging yourself and you feel that you're eating too much at night, make sure during the day that you're not trying to save calories so you can eat more at night. That's something I did. I think I spoke about that last week as well. Just, you guys, keep matching eating with hunger. And if you, for whatever reason, like to eat at night, you're hungry at night, that's you. It's okay. It's okay. As long as you eat with hunger, everything's fine. Um, then there was, you know, people are really lovely in our group, and, and the people often say, you know, you're fine just the way you are, and, and I 100% agree that. But I also want to make sure that the message is coming across that I, you know, I wanted to be in my happy weight range. And even though, you know, you can still love yourself and have a great life and not be in your happy, healthy weight range, the message here is to help you get there too, because I think you can have both. I think you can love yourself and have a great life and encourage, and it's, not, it's, a, it's a huge act of self-love to respect your body enough to listen to it. So I always wanna make sure that um, you guys who are new to this or who are doing this, don't just say, well, I'm fine the way I am. Yes, you are, but if you wanna get into your happy, healthy weight range, here's how to do it and stay there. Um, Will you just, oh yeah, okay, and this, this one. Will you um, lose weight or just stabilize when you build your healthy thin mentality? You will lose weight. 
because with your healthy food mentality, you eat less because we've been trained over time to eat more than our hunger is actually asking us to eat. That is societal. That is also based on dieting. So when you key into your healthy food mentality, you eat less, but it's better. It's, it's, it's not sad. I mean, I remember years ago being a dieter and going, oh, I wish I could just eat, you know, if I could just eat 3,000 calories a day, I'd be happy. I would never have to worry about this. Well, probably not, because if I could eat 3,000, I'd want 4,000, right? With the healthy thin mentality, I don't care how much food I get to or don't get to eat. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. The amount is relevant. The joy is what matters. And, and eating when I'm hungry, like never having to say to myself, oh gosh, you know, I can't eat anymore because I'm not hungry. That, that goes away. And that is where weight loss occurs when, you, when you're eating less and enjoying it more. And it's, it's all you, you're a grown up. you're eating what you want exactly when you want it. And this leads to the last question, which is um, the lady was saying that she's in back-to-back -back meetings. How do you do this? Okay, so sure, we've all had days um, where we've had our healthy thin mentality and we're like, Oh man, I just can't get any food or, or, or you know, I'm so hungry. And then you get over hungry and then you overeat. So like if you had a child, how would you, what would you say to that child? You'd say, okay, well, I'm going to put some, a little snack in your pocket. And if you get there where you're just so hungry and you can't wait for mom to come get you and help you eat that, eat that real quick. And a couple hundred calories and a little treat, a thing of nuts, a banana, a granola bar or a chocolate, whatever. It doesn't take long to put that down, right? And it will get you through those times. So there's always a way. There's always a way. And um, it's just it's just reprioritizing. Because I think as dieters, we, we hate prioritizing our eating because we don't feel like we should be eating, right? But when you have a healthy thing mentality, you go, no, I should be eating and I'm going to take care of myself. And I'm going to make sure that's exactly what I want. And it's amazing, right? So guys, I hope this has been helpful. Please like, share, subscribe. You know there's a lot of people out there who need to hear this. And um, join us on uh, Facebook in our private groups, on Instagram, Guides of Fat Name. Um, and hey, get our workbook. I mean, it's not expensive. It's there to help you. I'll send it right to you. And you can get your, your own healthy fit mentality brewing. And also our book, the, the book that kind of tells my story and how um, getting why the diet industry has, has set us up for this or, and why it's really important to understand that is on Kindle as well, in case that's helpful. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. Let me make sure I didn't miss any questions. Yeah, I'm good, and you're good, and I'll be back soon. Thank you.